σα. Η επόμενη συζήτηση θα είναι με τον πρέσβη των Ηνωμένων Πολιτειών στην Αθήνα, ο οποίο είναι Αμερικανό, αλλά τον τελευταίο χρόνο έχουμε, τον έχουμε παρακολουθήσει και με την ελληνική του διάσταση. Μιλάει και άπτα στα ελληνικά, αλλά φυσικά είναι ο εκπρόσωπο των Ηνωμένων Πολιτειών και ω τέτοιον πρέπει να τον ε, αντιμετωπίζουμε. I will start the discussion following the previous uh, panel and ask you about Ukraine briefly. Uh, two questions. First of all, uh, on the global geopolitical level, are we maybe um, pushing China and Russia to come closer, which in the world uh, geopolitical uh, analysis might end up being the wrong thing to do? Well, if we were to push to actually uh, uh, push Russia into China's hand or China into Russia's hand, uh, that would be um, an, un an unfortunate byproduct of, uh, of this war. But, you, you know, let me back up, Tom. This is the single most seminal issue in the past two decades. No one wanted this war. Um, our government uh, tried very hard to avoid it. Uh, I, I think it's in open source now that um, uh, Mr. Putin was offered several face-saving off-ramps to avoid war. Uh, but clearly, uh, you know, his intention was uh, not to compromise. You know, he, um, he finds himself, uh, I, I think, truly embarrassed that uh, the old Soviet Union broke up uh, at the end of the Cold War, and he views himself as the protector and reuniter of Mother uh, Russia, and will stop at nothing, including changing uh, sovereign boundaries to accomplish uh, this goal. This is wholly inconsistent with the rules-based order that has governed uh, Europe since World War II. And, you know, candidly, it's, it's, it's wholly inconsistent with anybody's uh, ethos. So when I say this is the, the defining moment that policymakers and, and world leaders uh, have encountered in the last uh, 20 years, I don't exaggerate. Because, uh, you know, as much as this is about Ukraine, it's about so much more than Ukraine. We simply cannot let an autocrat change boundaries by force. Because if we allow this to happen, and let me tell you, the world is looking at what the reaction of all of us is going to be. Who's next? This can't stand. So, um, you know, when people uh, talk to me about the hardships that they're enduring, and there was a lot of secondary effects, um, you know, I, I understand that. I understand the electricity prices went up three, four, five times. Um, but, uh, you know, I assure you that the people of Ukraine who did not uh, start this, that they had their nation invaded, and, and I wish there was more coverage of the barbarity of what the Russian military is doing to the people of Ukraine, okay? We didn't want this. We tried to avoid it, but we're stuck with it. And now that we're in it, there's no other option than to see it to the end and win it. The Ukrainian people deserve no less. But, you know, this is about the type of world that we're going to live in, that we're going to allow something like this to happen, or we're going to send a very clear message to everyone that it's not. Now, I've heard that there are other countries that have helped with sanctions avoidance, and, and you know, what would be very important out of this is to be, we're going to bleed Russia out, and we're going to diminish their ability to do harm. Now, clearly, there are some, uh, some nations out there that have undermined this principle, and it will take us longer to defeat Russia. Uh, and you mentioned uh, one of them. Uh, you know, that's a population of 1.4 billion people. They are, uh, have a scarcity of There's resources. One. India, 1.4. I mean, one. But let's. But, but you know, let, let's just say I, I don't think that anyone feels that their future is with Russia. Perhaps, perhaps this is about countries that have interests. Um, 
are taking advantage of very, very cheap energy uh, so they can benefit the people of their uh, country. But, you know, we have to be more active in managing these complicated relationships to peacefully coexist, even though we won't remove all the irritants from them. I cannot but note that I wish in 1974 the West, the U.S. and the West uh, responded a little bit differently in another invasion, but let's not go there. Um, you know, it's, it's always nice to, to be with a hard-hitting uh, journalist uh, during the Greek elections. Um, you know, uh, <coughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to talk and not say nothing, of which my staff was very confident I could accomplish that. Um, but given the importance you just noted of Ukraine, how does the U.S. assess uh, the Greek role, contribution, briefly, <coughs> because let's go to other issues. Look, it, uh, it's not a secret. Um, uh, you know, Opatel is a muy Edgar Pedaki Moji Loya. So, uh, translated, my father said, you know, actions, not words. Because words are rather hollow. Um, uh, about a year ago, um, legislation was passed. It was a Ukrainian supplemental. And it was to reward countries that were uh, so helpful um, uh, with Ukraine. And, and Greece was. Uh, I think they were the second country that sanctioned Ukraine. And they did it instantly because it was a matter of principle. Uh, so in that Ukrainian supplemental, there was $8 billion that were allotted um, uh, in uh, foreign military uh, financing. Um, the, you know, Greece was and will be the primary, uh, one, of the pro one of the two primary recipients. Uh, of that. Uh, we believe uh, that we have the capacity to build allies um, that are reliable, that act with principles so we can solve regional problems. And if you look at the region that Greece lives in, the Balkans, uh, the Black Sea, uh, the East Med, the Aegean, um, Syria, Libya, North Africa, Middle East, uh, there are from time to time some challenges here. So I would ask a question. Um, it's obvious that no country, including the United States, um, can uh, do it all by themselves, that they need allies um, uh, to help them, including regional allies. Where else would the United States turn to to solve these issues in this challenging uh, region other than Greece? And for that, uh, we have worked very, very closely um, with uh, the government of Greece to capacity build. Um, we are uh, thrilled but not surprised that they have the fastest growing economy in Europe the last three years running. Um, as there are things that are emerging, um, Greece is becoming the uh, military NATO logistics hub. Uh, a lot of what ends up in Ukraine emanates from Greece. Uh, I think you will see that Greece will become the commercial logistics hub, that's going to mean um, a lot. Because in northern ports in Greece that have interconnectivity and are intermodal, you'll see grain silos, warehouses, container ports. Uh, this will uh, benefit uh, commerce in the region and throughout the Balkans uh, substantially. And eventually, we're going to have to rebuild Ukraine. And I think a lot of that will come from Greece as well. And you know, we talked about that Greece is becoming an energy hub. This is the single most important thing. Um, I, I, I say this not in terms of a criticism, just a statement of fact, as we, you know, uh, if you can go back to 1974, I'd like to go back to the, the point where the Europeans thought that sole sourcing their energy from uh, Russia uh, was uh, a good exercise in risk management. Um, perhaps we, uh, should have understood that the Russians may have used this in a coercive, extortive, geostrategic manner. Um, the way I phrased it for now a decade is, we got to get Russia's boot off of Europe's neck. And it's very hard to do that when Russia could shut off the spigot and the lights don't go on. And they put themselves in a very precarious position because <clears throat> the energy was cheap and they didn't develop alternative sources. Well. That's done. So, you know, when people ask me, you know, how do we solve that problem? And the second question I get asked is, what is the United States doing for Greece? Well, 
uh, the answer to the first question is, given he, what we... He, he questions himself <laughs> the answer, so it's like... To be fair, most of these questions I had in mind, like the energy of the church. <laughs> but it's, this, is, this is what we call running out the clock. Yeah. This, this is what we call a, a Division three basketball team playing against the pro, and I'm up by one, and I just want to run out the clock. Uh, but now I forgot the questions I was exactly. asking myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Given where, you know, Greece had existing infrastructure uh, to be the solution here, and the, the Bethusa just got expanded, an FSU had gone there, and um, energy was coming into the Bethusa, and you know, it was, it was not only taking, Greece's, taking care of Greece's domestic needs, but now there was an opportunity to send it north so Greece could be the solution to what was a real problem. Um, I was honored, my good friend Valentin will be here today, he's the ambassador of Bulgaria to Greece. Um, the president of Bulgaria will be here um, as, as, as well, and, and I was honored to, to, uh, to meet with Visto, my, uh, the deputy prime minister of Bulgaria yesterday, here at Delphi. Bulgaria would have had substantial challenges um, keeping the lights on if it wasn't for Greece. Uh, so the fact that Greece had a Bethusa, the fact that there are, there are FSRUs, two in Alexandrupoli, there'll be one in Kavala, I think there's maybe one in Thessaloniki, Volos, Corinth, an interconnector, an electrical interconnector come from North Africa, maybe two, um, where in the given years, maybe 27, 28, Greece will have three to three and a half times um, more energy than it needs for its own domestic consumption. So Greece is becoming and will become the energy supplier of Southeast Europe. And you know what? Um, that's a good move because Greece won't use this in an extortive manner. They will cooperate and it will help the Balkans a lot and it will lower everyone's load electricity prices, and it will also not only uh, deal with energy transition, um, but it will also deal with decarbonization as well, as a lot of this uh, energy is coming from renewables, and we're getting off of, um, of lignite. So, you know, Greece is the solution because of its location, but two years ago, the United States was really not providing LNG to the Bethusa. Last year, it was 60%. Now, there are contracts with Gazprom that expire in 2026. Uh, I would imagine by 2026, um, the United States uh, will be the, uh, the energy supplier uh, to Greece. And that's just good for our relationship. Moving into indirectly into our local developments, we have elections. And of course, I had noticed. <clears throat> uh, you will probably not get involved in our local politics, but uh, based on what you noted about the deepening relationship, energy prospects, defense prospects, are you worried that this process could, in one way or another, change, be challenged, given possible results in these or elections in the future, or are you confident that the country has moved beyond uh, challenging this idea, I mean, our internal political process. I, I, am, I am, first of all, I am not confident that I will not get involved in Greek politics one iota uh, for two reasons. Uh, it's inherently wrong. <laughs> uh, and, and two, I think the founding nation of democracy knows how to take care of their own uh, politics and, and elections. Of that, I'm very, very confident. Um, the other thing is I'm going to, I'll point uh, to this. Um, you know, as a, as, as a young Greek American who came to visit his grandparents most summers, and uh, you couldn't help but notice uh, a little anti-Americanism. And um, I want to be very honest because I think, um, I, th I think there was a healing that needed to take place and continues to take place. Look, the United States has promised a more perfect union, but we are not perfect. Uh, we try every day to be better. Um, and it's aspirational, and that's what I love about my country. But we have made mistakes. We made mistakes in 1967. We made mistakes in 1974. The President of the United States, uh, at the time President Clinton, came to Greece and apologized for some of those things. They were mistakes. 
Uh, but this is not where the relationship is today. Um, I had, uh, I don't think he would mind me saying this, General Cavoli, the NATO Supreme Commander, um, we have dinner um, on, a, on a fairly frequent basis, and uh, he asked the question of, of our defense attache. He goes, where is the military-to-military -military relationship between Greece and the United States? And my military attache said, and which General Cavoli agreed with, he said, it is on par with Australia and Canada. The United States military is sharing, and, and in eight Greek military bases, it, we are investing a significant amount of money in this. We are helping with the capacity building uh, in Greece. Uh, foreign direct investment is reaching record levels. Greek companies have invested and have found Greece. Uh, you will, at the end of the year, there will be 1,100 Pfizer employees in Thessaloniki. There's 2,900 in its uh, headquarters in New York City. So, γιατί οι Έλληνες έχουν επιστήμονες και πανέξιμοι άνθρωποι, they have this intellectual capital. Um, U.S. investment is coming in, and I won't bore you with all the companies, but it's significant. I'll mention one, Google, $2.2 billion and 19,400 jobs that they're creating. Um, the military relationship is substantial. In November, 30 U.S. universities, the largest delegation in the history of international education in the United States, in the Faro Summit, came to Greece, did well over 100 partnerships and collaborations with 24 Greek universities, dual degrees, joint degrees, joint research. You know, this pillar, the strategic pillar of, of, of international uh, education is very important, but it's just one example of how the two countries are coming uh, closer together, but I think the data point, or what I would look to is, uh, now, over a decade, uh, over four Greek administrations and three U.S. administrations, the relationship has been uh, very, very close, a high degree of cooperation, and it's only getting stronger. And the only thing I will say politically, uh, because I've said this, I don't hide the fact that I have an outstanding relationship, and the United States has an outstanding relationship with the current government of Greece. But they had an outstanding relationship with the prior government of Greece, and I, I, I can say this with tremendous honesty. There will be no change, no matter what happens uh, in, in, in any election. This is enduring, and I think everyone on both sides of the Atlantic understands the benefits that come from this very strong, close strategic partnership. Finally, a question on our uh, <clears throat> defense uh, again, uh, relationship, but has to do with our neighbor, Turkey. There's a big discussion in Greece. Of course, it's their discussion, but because of the issue we have with Turkey, it's a discussion for us too. F-16s, will Turkey get uh, upgraded its F-16s? Will they get more F-16s? Where is this process? And along that, where is our process with the F-35s? Well, let me, let Which me is easier, I guess, the <clears> last <throat> part. Well, it's, 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 it's also a question that's appropriate for me to uh, answer. Um, but I understand both questions are appropriate for you to ask. Uh, F-35s, Greece will get the F-35s. Um, uh, that's By 2028? You know, there, there is in the queue, and, and right now they're scheduled to get them in, in, in 2028. Um, and it's important for NATO interoperability, as I think they will be the only country in the region that will have uh, F-35s. It's very essential in military exercises that, that if you don't have F-35s by 2030, it's going to be very challenging uh, to participate in these specific uh, NATO uh, exercises. And it's a very important interest of the United States to make sure that Greece has these F-35. So that will happen. Um, there is um, a lot of noise in the system about uh, F-16s. This was something that was sent to the Four Corners, congressional notification, tiered review, as, 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 as they say. Um, that's a very long process, and I think that's been years and years in, in the, uh, the making. Um, I don't have anything specific to add other than what has been said in, in open source reporting. Um, 
and I, and I will say what uh, one of the four significant decision makers in what we call the Four Corners has said, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, uh, Senator Menendez, and I will tell you that his thinking is, is uh, maybe not identical, but there are a lot of similarities to Senator Risch, Chairman McCall, and, and, and uh, Ranking Member Meeks. Uh, I, I think uh, they are hopeful that there is a day that uh, Turkey can receive the, the F-16s. Um, because uh, if that day comes, um, we will have put behind us um, some irritants uh, that I don't think should be there. The, the challenges in the relationship between Greece and Turkey are eminently resolvable. Uh, I, uh, and, and I also think that the United States and, and Turkey uh, traditionally have had a, a, a very close working relationship. Um, and we hope that um, we come back to those, uh, those days. And uh, if we do, and uh, I, I, I think uh, uh, the issue of um, uh, on one side is overflights and rhetoric, and on the other side, you know, I, I want to be very uh, clear on this because, you know, no, no, no country um, uh, has a monopoly on right and wrong here. Um, you know, Europe should treat Turkey a little better. They're a significant power, they're our neighbor here, and we need to manage a relationship where we can peacefully coexist. And it's disturbing to me that um, there is rhetoric on both sides uh, that... Um, both us, meaning Greece and Turkey or Europe and Turkey? Um, I, would, I would say, uh, it, 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 let's just say from every uh, angle, um, I think we need to, I, 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 look, I am not unaware of some of the challenges that exist here. Um, but uh, Turkey and Greece have stood side by side for millenniums here, and I think they know how to um, deconflict. They're very sophisticated uh, diplomats, as does Greece. We need to manage this relationship for peaceful coexistence. We will not solve every problem here, but I interact with with my Turkish interlocutors significantly. Um, it is no secret that the, the current Turkish ambassador here and the former Turkish ambassador here, that we are friends and I care for them as individuals. And it is in everyone's interest here that we work towards peace. Now, that's gonna take work, um, but we have to get past the rhetoric we have to remove the irritants. We have to solve problems. Um, and I think that can happen. Um, you know, this is not Israel and Palestine where the problems are much, much more significant. Um, you know, there are issues here where um, there has been a lack of communication uh, at times. Uh, I, I, I'm not, I don't say that as a sense of criticism. I say it as, as a statement of fact. And when you don't have, you know, uh, you don't have countries and, and the institutions of countries speaking to each other on a regular basis, what might emerge in this void is misunderstanding, miscommunication, and substantial overreaction. The U.S. playing a few seconds. Any facilitating role in this issue since you're friends with both countries? Can you play more of a role? In we, a few seconds. We can, play role, we can play a role if asked. The one thing I think the United States has to be is very, very respectful. And in any construct we enter into, even if we're well-intentioned, it has to be with a degree of sevasmo. So Turkey and Greece are NATO allies. They know each other better than we know them. And they're perfectly capable of solving um, some of the challenges in the relationships, because I know that both countries seek peace. Now, sometimes, you, you know, you may have internal politics that dictate rhetoric. Well, and in a strange I, way, if you say, I'll come one night, you know, in your island, but okay. Look, I, 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 think, I think everyone has made it clear that the coming one night is an insult to the dignity of a nation, and I was personally uh, offended because I happened to live in the country that they said that they would come one night. Now, having said that, 
you know, people say words, you know, in an election season, and, and, and you know, we can choose to give this greater depth and breadth, okay? But at the end of the day, actions have not followed what is election year rhetoric. There is a desire on both sides of the Aegean to seek peace and to compromise. We're going to have to facilitate a climate where we're able to do that. The United States will help if asked. We are here to support. But I want to get away from this notion or what happened in the past that we're going to come in and we're going to dictate everything. That is not our role. It's not our role. I, I am incredibly impressed by the depth and breadth of, of the Greek government and the Turkish government. They are capable of deconflicting, and I think when we get past both elections, I think you will see a very genuine effort by both countries to solve the irritants in their relationship, and that, my friends, that, my friends, benefits both countries. No one benefits more than this, than the Greek people. And, you know, uh, we have answered questions in the past by saying, look, we do have a level of concern, but we encourage both our NATO allies to work out their issues through diplomatic means in accordance with international law. And people say, oh, but Esme, that's not enough. I'm sorry. What other answer would you like anyone to give? Go to war? Let's have body bags coming? This is ridiculous. The issues that have challenged the relationship between Greece and Turkey can be worked out. Both sides have said they can work out. It's a sense of compromise. It's a, this is what diplomacy is about. We need to help work this relationship to peaceful coexistence, which is eminently possible. I'll ask the former vice premier and former foreign minister about that. Uh, thank you very much, Ambassador. It was great talking to you. Thank you.